From the cobbles of Flanders to the boards of Belarus, with a sprinkling of the Emerald Isle. It's a truly international flavour to this week's GCN News Show. OK, so we've had Down Under, Qatar, Oman, Tour of the Med and Ovar. For the purists, the season doesn't truly begin until Ghent. And Saturday, I saw the Omloop Het Nieuwsblad. The ladies kicked off the action, and it was Tiffany Cromwell who scored arguably the biggest win of her career to date, seeing off American Megan Garnier in a two-up sprint on a bitterly cold day. I'm delighted to say that Tiffany joined us earlier for a hangout. Firstly, congratulations on a, on a great win on Saturday. Um, can you talk us through the, the closing kilometres? This match, uh, you know, it was so good to be able to get the win. Um, came down to still quite a big group after the last cobble sector. Our, we had such a strong team for the race and you know, we were wanting to use numbers, we were four in the group. And so we just launched attacks in the last 20k to try to get somebody free and I managed to get one clear going away with Megan Gunnier in the last five kilometres and you know, knew it was an opportunity to go for the win and just had to be patient, be wait, work hard to establish a break but then time I spent perfection I was glad I was able to pull off the win. Ever since I first did my, my first classics in 2010 with the wrong down Blanderin, you know, I just love them, the technical aspect, the hardness, you know, you have to think, you have to be not only strong but also smart, but if you go in wrong position into the wrong sector, then it can be race over ultimately, so having that experience makes a massive difference. Yeah, I bet. So just very quickly then, what's coming up uh, for you now then? You know, you've got great form, what are you hoping to win? Yeah, so we have, we keep the team more or less together for the Classics campaign, we go up to Northern Holland and then my next big target is probably to the World Cup at the end of March and then Flanders is the next big one, you know, it's the biggest race on the calendar, it's one I'd love to win one day, but I know we have such a strong team to go into that race and you know, hopefully we win Orica AIS jersey going over the line first, but those are the next short term goals. The men's race followed on from the women's. Van Avermaet, Rollins, Chavanel, Thomas, all names that might have been worth a cheeky bet on Saturday. But no, they were frustrated in a group of eight chasing a two-man break containing eventual winner Luca Paolini of Katusha and Stein Vandenberg of Omega Farm of Quickstep. Vandenberg looked a little outclassed and he could neither outfox nor outsprint the wily Italian veteran in Ghent. As sure as Sunday follows Saturday, so too does Kerner Brussels Kerner follow Het Newsblad. Or maybe not. Traditionally a hard man's race, the weather was too bad for even the hardest of hard men and Kerner Brussels Kerner was called off. I caught up with Guy Andrews, editor of Rouleur magazine, to find out why this opening weekend in Belgium is so important to us as cycling fans. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the proper beginning. I mean, we've had a lot of races already, the Tour de Lander and Tour of Qatar, Tour of Man, but, um, but the classics are really when it starts, um, when, when the proper racing begins, shall we say. No disrespect to those other races, but, you know, it's, uh, it's when cycling comes back home, back to Europe and, and back to Belgium in particular. So, why is it proper racing? What, you know, can you put your finger on what it is about racing in, in Northern Europe? Um, I think what it is, is, is the history and the, the heritage involved in the races and the fact that the races that the riders want to win are the, the big name races. Um, certainly Tour of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix are two, two, two races that if you win that, your career is set for life. So, even though we've had races that have been going for a few years that are building momentum, this it takes many, many years to, to of being in the limelight of having big, big riders come and ride those races. I think that's one thing that Tour Down Under and, and Aman and Qatar are getting now. They're getting bigger names because seasons are starting earlier for riders, so they want to get the miles and they want to get the racing miles in their legs. So they are important. So after uh, Omelette Pet Newsblad, who's your money going to be on for Flanders now? Oh, crikey. Um, I'd never like to make predictions. I think Greg Van Averant rode really well. I think I think we've got a chance of seeing Grant Thomas do really well in Flanders, certainly. Um, it's always hard to say. I think it's always a bit of a lottery. I don't think it really told us a huge amount other than everybody's pretty well prepared. Um, and as the races pan out over the next few weeks, we've got five, five six weeks now till Flanders, um, we'll see some, 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 some of the contenders coming to the fore a bit more. So, cancellations on the road throughout Europe. The GP Lugano in Switzerland was called off as well, but the freezing temperatures weren't a problem for the World Track Championships in Minsk. There were plenty of new faces on the podiums, as a number of track legends had retired or elected to miss this one, but the level was as high as ever. One rider who had a breakthrough performance was Irishman Martin Irvin, who took his first world title, and also Ireland's first, for 117 years. Here's what he had to say earlier. Honestly, I think, on the day of the podium and the pursuit, it was my kind of 
my training goals, you know, so I had in the back of my head, so uh, the rest was just a bonus, you know. Can you pinpoint what's made the difference for you this year? You know, what what's caused the step up? Um, I think even a lot of road work I did, did a lot more road racing, you know, it kind of gave me maybe strength and depth I didn't have, you know, before or last year, and maybe that gave me, it definitely gave me the strength to back it up after the pursuit, you know, to back it up and do the scratch race. Some tech news now. In what was either a carefully planned PR move or a major gaffe, Rubberbank Cyclocross pro Michael van der Eyden innocently tweeted a picture of his new bike. It seems to show that we have confirmation that Shimano are introducing a potential game changer of a product, a hydraulic disc road brake. Van der Eyden's bike has what looks like prototype Shimano hydraulic DI2 levers. They look really neat and not much larger than standard DI2 hoods. The calipers look like existing Shimano mountain bike ones. Shimano are tight-lipped about it all, and van der Eyden has removed the photo from his Twitter feed. Let's hope he at least got some more followers. Now for a quick reminder of what we've been up to here at GTN. This week we're in Ireland for the announcement of the Giro d'Italia start in Belfast, and stage is also taking in Armagh and over the border in Dublin. And if you love your racing with an Italian twist, there's plenty coming up here on GCN soon too. We'll be at the Strada Bianca, the Roma Maxima, and also Torino Adriatico. And Dan Lloyd has been out in Switzerland. He's got news of what's coming up too. I'm currently stood in the track centre of the Velodrome at the UCI headquarters in Switzerland. At the moment there's a public session going on around me and when that's finished we're going to be interviewing one of the riders about the future of cycling. That rider is none other than UCI president Pat McQuaid. Don't want to miss anything on GCN? Be sure to subscribe. It's completely free. Thanks for joining us.